Good morning. Good morning. So I want to start with an understatement. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict is highly confusing. It is complicated, and it makes people very uncomfortable. And if this were an academic audience, someone would be asking for a trigger warning, because this is really uncomfortable. The major point of uh, discomfort for people is the moral issues at stake. And I want to talk about that, because I think that's central to understanding why principled support for Israel is the morally right thing to do, and it's the practical thing to do. Those are inseparable. They're two sides of the same decision. So I want to make three points. One has to do with what's missing from the debate. One is about what's at stake in this conflict for everyone. And three, what, what should be done to resolve the conflict. Because I think it is solvable, and I think the Israel victory uh, plan, the paradigm, is, the, is the, a really smart and compelling approach. So I want to tell you what's missing in this conflict, and it's primarily a serious concern with moral ideas, and specifically the principle of justice. And if you kind of break the issue down into two parts, there's a bunch of different views, but there are two dominant ones. If you talk to younger people, especially students, people who are millennials and so forth, for them, the story they've heard is primarily the Palestinian narrative. And it, the, the ideas that the Palestinians have, Palestinian cause, has the moral high ground. And what this typically means is that the Palestinians are inherently the victims. Uniform. And they, in effect, they can do no wrong whether they fire rockets at innocent people, whether they launch balloons with firebombs on the end of them, whether they are flying kites with swastikas and firebombs on the end of them, whether they vote Hamas into power and keep them there and support that kind of ideology. They essentially can do no wrong. They're not responsible for those kinds of decisions, which are reprehensible decisions. And the counterpart to this is Israel is typically presented as the villain. It's, it's the more powerful regime. It is militarily far superior. And in this kind of morality play, America comes in and puts the punching gloves on Israel and helps it to punch downward at the weaker side. And so the story that you get when you piece this together is the Palestinians have right on their side, Israel is punching down, and we help them. And that is a very powerful moral narrative. It's just false. If you really break it down and understand it, there are real issues to unpack here on the Palestinian side. But the Palestinian movement, the ideological movement that has been speaking or alleging to speak for this group of people, it is a fraud. It does not seek to remediate any of the concerns or, or claims of Palestinian individuals. It is a movement waging war on a free society. That's a moral issue. So when you talk to people who, who are attracted to that kind of narrative, their concern with justice is right, it's well placed, but it's really mistaken about what justice looks like. There's no justice in supporting a movement or a cause that seeks to dominate and tyrannize people, which is the goal of the Palestinian movement, whether in the uh, sort of straight dictatorial form of the Fatah PLO factions or the Islamist Hamas faction. So that's one way of looking at this. There's another kind of perspective that people bring, which again gets the whole issue of the moral ideas completely wrong. It puts the issues aside, and that's a view you might have encountered here in this building and throughout Washington, and it's the idea of let's find a solution right now. Who cares what the, the right and wrongs of this issue are? That's too complicated. Put that aside. And that, that whole mindset, which is amoral, it puts morality outside of the picture, that whole mindset is embodied in the, the peace process paradigm, which Daniel mentioned. It's been knocking around for decades. It's been a going concern since 1993. But that paradigm really, it, it shuns moral thinking. It doesn't take justice seriously at all. So there's two kinds of problem here. Mistaking what justice really stands for or disregarding it completely. And neither of them will get you to a solution. Neither of them will let you understand what's really at stake in the conflict. So I want to say a word about what's actually at stake, because I think this is another place which people misunderstand and fail to appreciate what's going on. So, common view is that it's a regional conflict, it's narrow, it's primarily about land and, and two groups of people fighting over a piece of land. That is a gross misconception. 
the real issue here is, is an ideas-driven conflict. The Palestinian movement, the ideological cause, uh, is an ideas-driven ideas group. And the ideas that they hold and, and have pursued lead them to seek Israel's liquidation. That's been true since the founding of this movement. It's been true since the efforts of their patrons, the Arab regimes earlier in the 20th century. And that is a reprehensible goal. You have to be able to judge it morally. They're driven by really, really bad ideas. And it has to be part of the equation. So what's at stake here is not simply a regional conflict. What's at stake here is, in my view, and the point I de develop in the book, is that this is a conflict between clashing ideals, between a basically free society on the one side, Israel, and a movement and regimes that support it that, that are hostile to human life, human freedom, and human progress. Wh whichever time slice of the conflict you look at, that's essentially how it breaks down. Freedom versus tyranny, or variations on the theme of tyranny. And that is a moral issue. You have to be able to recognize that difference and act on it. Unfortunately, that's not been the, the model that has been pursued. But once you do that, once you recognize that this is, in effect, a night and day moral difference between the two sides, between the adversaries, <laughs> that using um, rational moral ideas in this context is crucial. It actually helps understand the conflict and find a path out of it. You realize that, contrary to the subtitle of my book, the better way to describe this conflict today is the Israel-Islamist conflict. Because at the vanguard of the Palestinian movement now is the Hamas and the other Islamist groups. And behind them is the Iranian regime, which is trying to expand its dominion within the region. So the conflict now is really Israel versus the Islamists. And that itself is nested within the wider clash between free societies and the Islamist movement broadly. That's a lot. That's, that's really high stakes. So I want to say a word about, is this, so is this conflict even solvable? Um, now, zooming back into Israel and the Palestinians, I think it is solvable. Uh, and I think it's a mistake to think it's unsolvable. The only reason you would reach that conclusion is if you commit yourself to a, a, a paradigm, a peace process negotiated two-state solution. If you commit to that paradigm, it really is unsolvable. All that that can do is make matters far worse, as the, the record of the last 25 years have shown us. What does it take to reach a solution, a realistic, fair, just solution? And that's where I think a paradigm shift or a change in mindset is crucial. And there's several dimensions to this. One of them is that we need to get away from the mythology about America's relationship to Israel. I think it's a myth that America has been critically supportive of Israel. I think it's a myth that America's support is a, should be essentially material in the sense of military or financial. I don't think that's the primary. or even, I'm not, It's not even the most important, although that is helpful and welcome. And I certainly think it's not exclusively achieved through rhetoric or symbolism. I think those things are important, but they're not the, the primary or essential. What's really missing is a moral endorsement of Israel. A stand on the side of justice, that the moral high ground belo belongs to free society and free people everywhere. Standing with Israel because it's free, to the extent it's free, and for as long as it's a free society. That's what it looks like to have a mind shift, to be principled in this context. And it means being principled and supporting free people who are seeking freedom in Israel, among the Palestinians, however, free, however few remain and across the Middle East, because I think there are many people who would want better rulers than the ones that are tyrannizing over them. So a mind shift in America's approach means adopting a principled perspective informed by rational moral ideas. And the principle, I think, is freedom, individual freedom, which is a secular, individual principle. It's universal. It's good for everyone, in all places, in all times. If you ask me what kind of society should Palestinians have, or people in other Arab countries in that part of the world, I would say they should adopt an approach to society that's more and more like Israel, more and more like ours, to the extent that that's predicated on freedom. So freedom as a principle shaping our foreign policy is a necessary condition to getting to a resolution. But the other kind of mind shift 
is the kind that you, uh, Daniel, just spoke of, which is thinking about the conflict and recognizing some of the mythology about what's driving it. What's driving it is not the absence of a Palestinian state. What's driving it is not primarily the grievances of Palestinian groups. Those are issues you can talk about, and there's debates about that, and there might be real conflicts that you can, real disputes that you need at the micro level to solve. But the primary is an ideological commitment to liquidating a free society and freedom across the Middle East. That's the basic crux of this conflict. And the mind shift has to be to get America's policy and to encourage in Israel the idea that this conflict, this war ends when one side recognizes it is lost. And that's primarily a psychological, intellectual shift, a mind shift of this cause is lost. There's no point raising up our arms against Israel. That's a lost cause. And that's, that's, a, that's the paradigm that history teaches us really ends conflicts, when one side admits its own defeat, in effect. And the other side can demonstrate that it has stood its ground and won't brook further attacks. That's how conflicts end. And I think this is one reason I, I, I recommend this approach in the book, because I think the natural end point of this conflict is to recognize that the side that should win is the side that stands for freedom and the, the value of the individual's life and the ability to produce and live and prosper and innovate and create. That's the kind of society that's good for all people in all places, regardless of their race, regardless of their religion. That's the side our policy should be on. And in this case, it means standing with Israel and standing with all genuine freedom seekers among the Palestinians and Arab countries and everywhere, and against, firmly against, our common enemies, the Islamists primarily and the Palestinian movement more broadly, as part of a wider perspective on the Middle East. But that's the mind shift that needs to happen in order to get a truly just resolution to this conflict. So I want to say one final word uh, on part of what would make people uncomfortable or make this controversial, which is I'm arguing for a principled approach. And I think that's a necessary condition. A lot of people find that off-putting. It sounds like the kind of stuff you talk about in graduate seminars. It's platonic. It's divorced from the facts. Who cares? It's a luxury. It doesn't really help us solve anything. And part of what I try to demonstrate in the book is that precisely because the conflict is so complicated, precisely because there are so many conflicting claims and issues to unravel, that is all the more reason to adopt a principle or perspective that brings clarity and brings moral confidence to the decisions and conclusions that you reach. So in fact, it's not the case that it's so complicated, therefore you've got to throw your principles out the window. On the contrary, it's precisely because of so much at stake and it's so complicated, that's all the more reason to adopt a principled perspective, which means looking at the facts and evaluating them according to an objective moral standard, the ideal of individual freedom. So with that, I'll, I'll end my comments here. Thank you.